John here, guys, and today we're talking about the Predator 5 Nano. <laughs> the latest analog camera that is dominating the racing scene. This is the preferred camera used by the majority of FPV racers, and we're going to tell you why. That's right, it's analog. Oh, analog. One ugly motherfucker. Yes, I'm back on a little bit of an analog kick because I've been experimenting with Freedom Spec Racing. This is an ultralight racing where you can use a 3S battery on a 6S quad. You get really good flight times. And man, I have another video coming about, about this very soon. It is renewing my, my joy for FPV drone racing. I gotta tell you guys. And so if you are gonna have to suffer through the disgustingly nasty image of an analog camera, you might as well do it with the best one and Fox here makes a number of upgrades. Now, yes, I did swear off the Predator line of cameras a few years ago as their first two or three versions that they came out with. I could swear the cases were made out of paper mache. If you sneezed on one, the case would just tear, causing you to basically have to buy a new one. It was extremely frustrating, uh, but they have improved the case design. It's a little bit sturdier and it is now smaller, so there's less chance of it daring and I also am running it in this nylon derivative PCTPE pod right here to protect it now the specs on this thing it has a one third inch CMOS sensor that's a very nice size sensor for a very nice size image it is both 4x3 and 16x9 switchable the other nice thing is that you can switch or flip it vertically or horizontally I say he'll flip you he'll what flip you flip you for real yeah I'm shaking now in some of these tight racing builds, you don't want that connector really close to the stack. So you can actually run it upside down and flip the image so that your connector's not in danger of smashing into something. I actually broke one of the cameras I was sent uh, doing that exact thing. And then Lamone was like, why didn't you just flip it? And I was like, oh, I didn't think about that. So that's a nice feature. I've done it on the new ones that I have bought. I got sent one of these for review, yes, but I liked it so much that I bought two more of my own and I'm gonna be racing with this thing. It is 1000 TV lines. And the most notable thing, because let's face it guys, we all know that there's probably only been two Predator cameras. The first three were probably all the same, and then number four and five are probably the same, but there is an update to this. You know, it's like Foxier really just likes to tweak the image settings a little bit and say it's a new camera, and that's garbage, but at least this time they're giving you something. The 1.7, lens this is a wider lens a wider field of view and when you're on a race course trying to figure out where your next gate is going to be being able to have the widest image possible is really the difference in getting those faster lap times that in combination with the ultra low latency of this thing the latency is only four milliseconds, virtually imperceptible by humans. So in addition to the great camera, the field of view is actually now 125 um, on the horizontal and 155 on the vertical if you're in four by three mode. There's also a lot of different camera modes on here. There's an auto, a night, a cloudy. Eh. Some people really like to mess with those. There is also the option of getting the connector version or the pinned version or pad version. The pad version has a cable that runs out like other nano cameras. I actually like that better. You don't have to fiddle in there and you have the connector to be able to make those image adjustments directly on here. Now they did ship it with all of the default OSD items on here, which is like pure bleh. <laughs> it's garbage. Why do you guys keep doing that? Default the OSD camera things to off because nobody uses them except for wing guys. And let's face it, nobody cares about wing guys. Um, so that's kind of a minus. But other than that, this is a great camera. It's the best one on the market. Run cam is just like sleeping over there. They've had the Run Cam Nano 2 for like the past two years. Yeah, it's a great camera, but this one is better in my opinion. I did run the Run Cam Nano 2 two seasons ago when I was still running analog, but now 
Runcam has no updated offerings for the racing side. Foxier is still churning away, giving you more features. So they seem to be taking it over. These things run about $36, $37. So it's a little bit cheaper than the DJI side of things. I'm pairing that up to the Team Black Sheep Pro Nano 32 tiny video transmitter in here. And the image is excellent. We're going to show you some footage from the Multi GB qualifier right here. So check it out. What do you in the comments, guys? Are you running analog? Are you racing? Do you want the best image possible with some something like the T-Rex or the Phoenix 2, or do you want the best latency possible? Um, you know, the Predator image has improved so much over the years. You usually had to take a little bit of a sacrifice from running a racing camera, and now the image quality is almost on par with those top varieties, and you have the wide field of view, and you have an ultra light size. What do you think in the comments, guys? What are you running? Thanks, guys. Bye.